This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We're all glad we made it this far. Hallelujah. Amen. It's our 30th anniversary celebration today, so we're excited about that. We were just watching a video, which will be shown uh, during the service a little bit, and it brings about a lot of memories and a lot of places you've, we've been and things that have been done. And uh, could, Would you turn my voice down just a tad? Or maybe I should turn the monitor down. That's probably, that's better. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll be talking about the Holy Spirit. And I don't know that you can talk too much about the Holy Spirit. He seems to be the most misunderstood person of the Godhead by many people. And we've talked about uh, his personality. We've talked about that he is a person with attributes of personhood. Uh, he's not a ghost. And uh, then we were talking last week about the fact that one of his uh, jobs on his, his, um, his assignment is to glorify Jesus. And so in glorifying Jesus, he's going to show him off. He's going to make him look as big as he is. And how many know that you're living in a time when maybe Jesus is a little too small in your mind? We don't think of him as being big enough. Uh, Brother Dunbar used to say that if your problems are bigger than the Lord, then your Lord is too small. I always remembered that. We had it up in our office. We still have it in our office. Uh, yep, Dunbar from Colorado Springs. So he's going to lead us into all truth. So what we're living in is not the truth. It's our reality, perhaps. But actually, it's not really our reality. Uh, when he is the truth, then that changes how we see what we're living in. And that's important for us. And I, I'm, I'm thinking that we can lose track of the Holy Spirit in our everyday life just by being so busy, so distracted. So, um, uh, not paying attention, I could say, not paying attention. And it seems like it's when those times are tough is when we start uh, looking for the Holy Spirit. Like he went somewhere else, but he didn't go somewhere else. He's, uh, he's with us. And so, one thing we have to remember is that the Holy Spirit is never going to glorify man. And I think that you have to realize this really deep in your heart. He will never glorify man. Why would God glorify flesh? Flesh and God don't get along together. He did create us, but our flesh is rotting because we fell from grace in the garden. So... If there's any good thing that's going to come through mankind, it's going to come <laughs> from Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is going to be involved in that, and he's going to bring honor. Well, honor is kind of a lost art anymore. Honoring. And the Bible talks a lot about honor, doesn't it? Honor your father and your mother and... What does it say? You'll have long life, right? Okay. So it does. You just honor your your parents. You honor your authority. And uh, for our young people, that's hard to do because we think our parents don't know what they're doing. And sometimes they don't know what they're doing. But that has nothing to do about honor. I honor the office of the president of the United States. I always have. It didn't matter who was in there. I still honored the office of the President of the United States. The office. And then uh, we pray to help what's going on. So we really need to become more aware of the Holy Spirit. We, we say we're spirit-filled people. Uh, in this church we say that. Because we are all supposed to be spirit-filled. That means baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as given by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us and has control of our life. And I guess the, the, 
the, the point is, how much control have we given him? How much control have we really given the Holy Spirit in our life? Honor, respect. Uh, we should be honorable people because the Holy Spirit's dwelling in us. We should honor God in everything we do. Uh, be respectful to the things of God, even if we don't understand them. And I've seen so many people who get on this thing about the Holy Spirit and uh, they actually put themselves in jeopardy of, of uh, heaven, I think, because of the way they speak about him. You know, the Bible says that if we uh, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness for that sin. That's the unforgivable sin. Well, attributing the works of God to the devil would be blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And so, if we say that tongues is of the devil, what have we done? Slap my mouth. Slap your mouth. Whatever. I mean, some of this is real important for us to recognize. Yeah. And so, uh, if we say that, what, what, what did Jesus say? If I cast out devils by... Be out the finger of Beelzebub, then who do you cast him out by, right? Well, no, he didn't uh, use the power of the devil. He didn't need that. He's God. So we never want to attribute the things of God to the devil. They don't go together. Be, being careful about that. Have you ever heard anybody do that? You can all talk. Okay, well, I've heard lots of, I've heard people on the radio say it. I've heard lots of people say that those things are not for today and tongues is not of God and so on and so forth. So uh, you have to recognize that that is the enemy speaking through whoever that vessel is. That's the enemy. They have yielded their authority to the enemy if they're born again. If they're not born again, well, they're just like their father, the devil, speaking of things they know nothing about as if they knew something about them. Because if you're not born again, you don't understand spiritual things. It's quite simple. So uh, the Holy Spirit is not a plaything. We don't order him around. He's not our slave, our servant. Uh, and actually, uh, we need to be uh, more respectful. And we need to be more, what would I say, yielded to what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. We can get in a bad habit of not doing what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. Anybody ever experience that? And he wants to help us, but we want to do what we want to do. And so sometimes we just ignore him. And we can get in a bad habit with that to where we're no longer being spirit-led. We're being people, flesh-led. We're being people-led because we've disregarded him so much that we've tuned him out. So it's, it's a, something for us to consider. And uh, we need to relate to him uh, differently, more respectfully, more honorably, more um, knowing that he dwells in us. If we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, if we're born again, born again, when we're born again, the Holy Spirit is the one that brings us into the new life. When we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, we give him the authority in our life to where he's, he's able to direct us and lead us and speak to us and through us and, and give us revelation and all of those things. And so knowing what he does helps us to be more responsive to him. Yes, it all comes down to our will. It's whether I will or he will. <laughs> and he's not going to fight you for it. <laughs> he's not going to fight you for it. He's going to let you do what you're determined to do. <laughs> I didn't hear you. We have to deal with the consequences of our decision, yes. Just like children, when their parents tell them something and they decide to do something else, then they have to deal with the consequences. 
The problem with raising children is when we remove the consequences and fix everything for them when they don't do what they should do, then they never learn to be responsible. If we look at the way God helps us, is that he'll instruct us, and then if we don't do it, we're going to learn by what we suffer. That's how Jesus learned. The Bible said, what do you think? You're better than Jesus? No. No, nah, we're not better than Jesus. We're going to learn by what we suffer. I've learned a lot of suffering things <laughs> by my own stubbornness. I'm telling you what. Even to the point of, I was somewhere the other night, and they were having a little little uh, meal. It was later at night. I don't eat too much late at night. So I was eating something, and I thought, mm, they have this over there. I should go get one of those. And it was like the Holy Spirit said, uh, that's not going to go very well. You're doing fine where you're at. And I went, okay. And then I thought, how many times have I disregarded that? And ate and ate and ate on and then ended up with indigestion and didn't sleep half the night and so on and so forth. I don't know if anybody could say amen to that, but yeah, so uh, I felt really proud of myself. Wow. That's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and, and then I'm thinking, I've not been doing so much of what I'm supposed to. I think I've been dissing him, dismissing him, uh, being rude. Rude. When, when you speak to somebody, you'd like them at least to acknowledge that you're speaking to them, right? Or you wonder if they heard you. They could even go, got it, or whatever. But uh, I'm thinking, I, have, I need to repent. I've not as been as sensitive to the Holy Spirit. There's no reason he has to try and kick us in the head to get us to do something. Right. Yep. It's interesting. I have one little dog, and I think she's kind of going deaf. I'm, I'm not sure. She just doesn't hear a lot of things that I'm noticing that she should be hearing. Of course, she's in her 80s now. And so uh, I have noticed, though, that she'll watch me. And if I make a hand motion, she's on it. If I holler at her, she don't get it. And I thought, I shouldn't have to be hollered at by the Holy Spirit. I should be able to just see him and know what he wants. Hear that small, still voice and be able to follow it and mind him because he's got good things for me. I know you can all think of instances. We're not going to ask for any testimonies on that account. But you've all got instances where you didn't listen. And, and so, but I'm just saying we can learn, we can start tuning him out on a regular basis to where pretty soon if somebody doesn't listen to you or you don't think they're hearing you for a long period of time, you quit talking. And what do you think the Lord is going to do? He's going to quit talking. Well, they're not listening. He loves us. But, you know, he might try hand signals. He might try facial expressions. He might try something to communicate with us. To say, oh, that's being silly. That's not so silly. It's not so silly. He really wants to help us. And so uh, one thing we need to recognize when we're dealing with spiritual gifts is that the Holy Spirit will never shame or condemn do we know that condemnation is not of God? He'll never condemn. And he's never going to degrade a person before other people. He's just hes not going to do that. Uh, I've heard prophecies that were not nice prophecies. And we say, well, Jeremiah prophesied hard. He prophesied hard, but it was a different thing than... Uh, somebody trying to avenge somebody else by a word of prophecy. He brought a warning from God. He brought a warning from God. But there again, we need to recognize sometimes God does warn us through prophetic utterance, but he doesn't shame us, condemn us, or degrade us in the meantime because he's always expecting us to make a 180, not a 360, but a 180, and go back the direction we came so we don't run into the wall. So it's important to recognize that when you're evaluating things that you hear, 
radio, television, whatever, if it's degrading, if it's mocking, if uh, it's shameful, if it's, uh, I mean, you can see hear that all the time on the news, and you can see where that comes from, but the problem is that it can creep into the Christians because everybody else is talking like that, so we're just going to talk like that about people. But God doesn't talk like that about us. He said in his word what we are. We are beautiful. We're the apple of his eye. He's got a lot of hope and investment in us, doesn't he? He's not going to let that go. And he believes and has set up that you create with your mouth words. So the words God says to us are going to be bringing us to our destiny. So if we learn what he says about us in here, we'll know where we're going and we can do it. And we lose track of that. It's easy to get distracted. It, it really is. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and to condemn. The Bible says, and it's Romans 12, there is now therefore no condemnation. No condemnation. If you feel condemned, that is not God speaking to you. What does he do? Convicts. That's the word, convicts, yeah. He convicts, which is different than condemning. Because when the Holy Spirit convicts us, to be convicted is like Cheryl said, he shows us the problem, and then he fixes it. He wants to fix it. He wants you to fix it. But he's already, he's fixed it because he's spoken it to your heart. Now you're the one that has to act on the word, right? That's where you repent. Remember the word repent? We repent, we go the other opposite direction because we're like, oh my gosh, am I doing that? Oh, I don't want to do that anymore. Boom. So we stop it. We're not condemned and guilty. We just saw the truth and we turned away from it. That's right. Condemned is. You're right. That's a good point. Condemnation. You're already convicted. You're already guilty. That's why you feel guilty when you're condemned. Uh, sometimes you can feel guilty about things you didn't even do. Sometimes I wonder, did I do that? Did I act like that? But the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn us. He convicts us, which helps us a lot to make course adjustments, right? Course adjustments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we may not be off much, but he don't want us off any. He wants us to come to the right end, and so he wants us to be right on track. <laughs> right. Keep your compass on heaven. Amen. So if you receive a word of prophecy, and it's condemning, you receive a word of prophecy, and it, um, what do we say, it uh, makes you feel ashamed. Uh, actually, what did you say? Embarrassed. embarrassed. That's a good word. Yeah, embarrassed. Right? Chances are, what? That's not the Holy Spirit. So don't receive it. That's right. You don't have to receive every word. You can plead the blood. And you can just reject it, just like you reject the Holy Spirit sometimes and you don't listen to him. Well, just reject that as an evil word, a word that's not from God. And that's what we call bearing witness with your spirit. I mean, it may embarrasses you, uh, da -da -da -da, it points you out, so on and so forth. Well, we want to be pointed out in a good way, but we don't want to be pointed out in a bad way. And the Lord knows how to get our attention and help us to be healed. So there's just a big difference between the devil's way he deals with us and the way the Holy Spirit deals with us. And we should take that and use that with others. So going back into the flesh, 
is where we start dealing with condemnation. And I don't know about you, but I was raised in condemnation. That's how my mother kept me in line. So uh, I was always condemned. I was always guilty. I was never good enough. I was all of those things. And that's just the way mothers were then. They wanted the best for you, but they didn't know God. So how are they going to do it? They're going to the way they did their parents did it. Now, if their parents were saved, you got a whole different kind of treatment. Or you should have, because there was a difference in the way they addressed things, if they knew better. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it doesn't mean that, actually, I found God work this way. If he, if he has a fault with you, the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you about it in here. He's going to convict you of it. If you ignore him, then let's just make it a short course. Uh, he's going to let you do what you want. He's not going to stop you, lasso you, tie you up to a post. No, you can't do that. I told you not to do that. No, he's not going to do that. So you make your choice. Then you do what you're going to do. So Holy Spirit's not happy with that. God's not happy with that. We're in a place of sin. It's, it's going to separate us from God. So the Holy Spirit will bear with us. But the next time it, it, it goes on, then somebody else is going to speak to us about it. Maybe um, a husband, a wife, maybe a child, um, maybe somebody close to you that's not going to embarrass you in public. And say, da, 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 da. So they'll tell you. And then you... You're still bent on doing what you were doing, and you don't connect that with the Holy Spirit when he spoke to you about it. Okay, so then you go ahead and do what you're going to do. So he's tried twice, hasn't he? The Bible says the next time, what's he going to do? It'll be before the church and before everybody. Everything that's hidden. Hmm? You know, I don't know where it is, but it is the one where he says if you bring... Uh, well, there's one. What if you bring your gift and and then um, then you need to leave it and go uh, make things right with the person? But there is another one. There is another scripture that that talks about if you're going to correct somebody. It must be in the the small epistles with Paul saying he would you would talk to them first. Then you're going to take another person with you. Okay, so then they're going to talk to them with you. Then they disregard that. So then you're going to take it before the church or or the group of people. Right? So that's how the Holy Spirit works with us. He's going to... Take some more, and then if you don't regard them, then it, it can be a headline in the in the newspaper. I mean, God will go to any result, any end to bring you back to Him. He wants to help you, but we don't always want to be helped. <laughs> so that's what we see about the uh, <laughs> the same. The same type of conviction, and if we don't respond, and so on and so forth, and so I don't know. I I, pref I would prefer to get more sensitive and get it the first time, so I don't have to go through all that. Because look at all the time we waste being bad, if that's bad, right? Ignoring, indifferent, that sort of thing. You don't want to go around that mountain again. That's right. Exactly. Has <laughs> that done that? Bought the T-shirt and threw it out. <laughs> threw it out. <laughs> We're not doing that again. Absolutely. So we can see there's three or four different concepts in, in the Bible where it says that 
if we don't respond, then there are consequences, and God really wants us to uh, respond because he doesn't want us to go through hurt and harm. He's a good, good father. Yeah. He's a good, good father, right? So... Um, but he will reprove us because he loves us. And that's something we need to consider because we don't always know what we're doing. I don't know if you never noticed that, but sometimes we do things we don't know what we did that uh, it wasn't right. And uh, the Holy Spirit will help us to know that it wasn't right. Or we may have an attitude in our heart that's tripping us up and we don't even recognize it. And it's not that we want to do it. It's just there and we need some help to dig it out and see uh, that it's not going to be there to bring us a life of condemnation and guilt because those things seem to nag us and hang on. So the Holy Spirit. Matthew 18, 15 through 17. Let's read that since we're on this topic today. Revelation. Did you say Revelation. Matthew, I'm sorry. Okay, Matthew 18. Okay, read it out loud for us, please. Right. So there we have a correction pattern. And it goes all through the scripture. That pattern goes all through the scripture. So we shouldn't be surprised when that's the way that the Lord deals with us. And uh, we're supposed to deal with other people in the same way. Of course, that takes us over into forgiveness, right? How many times shall we forgive? 70 times 7. And, man, that's a lot of forgiving. I mean, wow, that's a, Yeah. Can you keep track? And some of us can keep track. Some of us can keep track. And we, we can count it out. <laughs> I keep a logbook. But there again, that's something. Forgiveness should be that free. Because who of us has not repeated the same thing before the Lord again and again? And we want forgiveness. And how can we expect to get forgiveness for the same skill that thing again and again and again if we can't forgive somebody else for the same stupid thing again and again? And when we become a forgiver, we may find out that those people didn't do a stupid thing. It's us that was stupid in our receiver. You're right. Uh, they they were doing just fine, and they had a lesson to teach us, but we got all bent out of shape because we didn't like that lesson that we were listening to. And so we begin to treat them like we treat the Holy Spirit sometimes, right? <laughs> we're not listening to them. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's important to become, to, to know the difference. And... Uh, I've never heard the Holy Spirit say, you'll never amount to nothing. I've never heard him say that. Not even, not, not, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, when you know better, but otherwise the world is talking all the time like that, isn't it? Your teachers tell you, I mean, it's uh, interesting. Your what your teachers tell you, and you believe your teachers because they are kind of in an exalted place in your life. And I remember my fourth grade. I'll never forget my fourth grade teacher. I had a second grade teacher. That was my first year in school. She was really wonderful. Her name was Mrs. Blue. And I remember her as good. But then I had a fourth grade teacher named Mrs. Frey, and she was not nice. 
and I had trouble with math. And she just said, you just never got to get that. You're so stupid. You don't get this. What do you get? It's like, so I never thought I would ever be good in math. I cringed every time I had a math class. I was, it was never a joy to me. It was always a terrible failure area. And then the funny thing is, as life goes on, then I end up teaching people how to do bookkeeping. Well, Mrs. Frey, she I show you, ha, ha, ha. You was lying to me. And your life goes that way. You've noticed that in yourself. You may not be think you were good at English, but then all of a sudden you're writing and people are being blessed. And you go back and you think, who told me I wasn't good at this? Well, they didn't know. But God knew what you had in you, which was going to come out and glorify the kingdom. Amen? So it's amazing, just amazing what the Holy Spirit knows. And if we talk to ourselves negative, then there is a worldly part of us. The flesh will respond to our own self-condemnation and make us self-conscious. And there we lose the vision of the Holy Spirit leading us and God helping us. Do we lose that vision? We're kind of down under it, and it's easy to get there. And we can dig the hole with our own mouth sometimes because when you're having a bad day is when the Lord's going to come along and bless you. And then you recognize how deceived you were and how good he is. Because you weren't really having a bad day. But he blessed you. So the Holy Spirit comes and he wants to bless you. He wants to lead you into all truth. You can look before the mirror and say, Oh, I'm looking so old. Oh, look at all those wrinkles. And then the Holy Spirit will say, You're so cute. I just love you. You're like, are you joking? Don't you see those wrinkles? I'm talking you into the wrinkles now. <laughs> no, I don't see you like that. I don't see you like that at all. I love you. And his love makes us wrinkleless. Right? We're going to be without spot or wrinkle. The church, the bride of Christ. We're going to be without spot or wrinkle. So no age spots, no wrinkles. Everything's great. Amen? That's where we're going. Hallelujah. That's the way he sees us. So we can see ourselves that way. I like that part. So he doesn't deal with us like man deals with us. He, he, he helps us in a precious way, a way of love. And so... Um, it's something we might want to consider that we might want to start dealing with people in love that we have had problems with. We might want to start dealing with people in love. Make a decision. I have made a decision that I'm going to walk with you in love. And that doesn't matter what you do, I'm going to walk with you in love. I'm going to do my part. And if I have to die to do it, that'll be better for me in the kingdom because I need to die to myself. And people are only difficult when ourself is involved. You can write that down. That's a good point. Okay. <laughs> now, if we have faith in the Holy Spirit, we know he dwells in us, and we have a faith in a person, not an it. And so I know you all know this, but this is just going to be reminders. We don't refer to it. He's not an it. He is a person. So uh, when we talk about people, we don't call them its, do we? Its usually are what inanimate objects. The pole is an it. Do you see it right there? <laughs> but you see them, that's people. Different pronoun, I guess you call it. And the Holy Spirit is a person. We've just proved it because of the fact that we've seen that he has all the attributes of being a person. He just doesn't have a body that we can see. He has our body that he has moved in and begun to dwell in. So he is not an it. He is not a... Uh, when we talk about the Holy Ghost... Some people think there's just like Casper the ghost. 
whatever other ghosty things there were, but the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit are the same person the part of God which is his spirit. And we are very fortunate in that he dwells with us, he walks with us, he, he leads us into all truth, he glorifies Jesus so we can see the Lord better, he opens our ears so we can hear better, he's just real. John 14, 16 says, I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And the comforter is one of the words for the holy, the person of the Holy Spirit. The comforter. He's the comforter. And it's very comforting to not be alone, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad. When I got born again, I didn't know there was any such thing as anything. I had no church, no church teaching. It was all antichrist teaching. Uh, uh, all against the church. No, we weren't. We had little, you know, we had little Christian sayings. Cleanliness is next to godliness. All those kind of little Christian sayings, but anything about the church. And uh, when I got born again, I received the Holy Spirit. I received Christ. I received the Holy Spirit, and I had a vision. And I thought that's the way it happened to everybody. Early in the next morning, I found out that wasn't true when I told somebody about it. <laughs> you what? You're a holy roller? Well, I don't know. I haven't rolled. I don't even know what kind of church I was in. I don't even know what happened to me. Why would you thought I'm a holy roller? I mean, I just like, okay. <laughs> so, uh, we got a lot to learn about the Holy Spirit, don't we? And about Jesus and about God the Father and about the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together in our lives. And so the Holy Spirit is, is someone that I don't want to be without. So I don't want to grieve him. I, I think if you don't listen to him, it probably grieves him. He doesn't like to see you suffer. And when you don't do what he tries to lead you to do in truth, then you're going to go into error. And then, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. He'll give us wisdom from God. He gives us the mind of Christ. There is so much that the Holy Spirit does for us. And uh, sometimes we can even get to thinking it's us. If you're not careful, wow, I had a great idea. Uh, no, you didn't have a great idea. <laughs> it was the Holy Spirit that gave you that idea. Well, there's Miss Jean Johnson. Praise the Lord. You welcome, welcome. One of our mothers in the faith. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, that's awesome. It's a need, a day to need to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so uh, Jesus told his disciples that he had to go away, that the Father might send the Comforter. And, of course, the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. He's the advocate. He's the counselor. He's the helper. He's the strengthener. He's the standby. He, this is all part of his function and his support to us. And he strengthens us. He's our attorney. He uh, stands before the throne of grace, and he is an advocate for us with the Father, presenting the blood on our behalf that we don't have uh, punishment for what we've done because we have received forgiveness. He, uh, he's just a real companion. When you think about it, he's with you every day. You should be treating him like your best friend. That's right. Yeah. You got to ask him what you're going to have for lunch. Really? Or where you're supposed to go? Or what you're supposed to do today? Or all those things. You're supposed to do that. And if we see him in the passenger seat of our car as we're driving down the highway, it might change our driving habits, right? 
Well, it ought to. Would you want to be seen doing that with the Holy Spirit in the passenger seat? I don't know about that. Hmm, something to think about, right? Or while we sit somewhere and are lonely and all by ourselves, wish we had somebody to talk to, we have the Holy Spirit, don't we? He's, he's ready for a conversation. He's ready for a conversation. We might learn something if we conversed with him more often. Praying in the Spirit. We need to be praying in the Spirit more often. We really need to increase our praying in the Holy Spirit. And so he is as real today as he was when Jesus was here. He's as real today as he was in Genesis 1 when he hovered over the face of the deep and helped creation come into existence. And so there we have the Holy Spirit. Not all of him, just that part that we're talking about today. Now, anybody have anything you want to say? No? Okay. Well, you're just learning. That's good. We're all still just learning. Yeah. Well, we'll never be too old to learn about the things of the Holy Spirit. And as we've been talking um, in, in some of the ministry uh, messages, is that if we become indifferent to the word then and thinking we know it, then we're missing something because uh, we probably didn't learn it if we're indifferent to it. I don't know about you, but all the scriptures that I've learned, that I've learned, learned, I never forget them. I don't even need to look at my Bible. Because I learned, learned them. But a lot of things, you just see you marked it and you say, oh, I, I know that. I, look, I marked that. And it's like, but I don't know what it says. I don't know what it means for my life. I'm not walking in it. So I've become indifferent to the word of God. And that uh, is a dangerous place for us. And you'll never have any closer relationship to anyone as you will have to the Holy Spirit if you can just allow him to be your best friend. Be your best friend, be your counselor, tell you what to do. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, you probably need somebody to tell you what to do. Yeah. Yeah, which way to go? I remember when I worked for the county, and I used to drive all over town and, and uh, so I got to know the city pretty well, and that was back then. Everything's changed, but but I would uh, I when I get in the car in the morning, I would say, "Would you please help me get to these places?" And then I would practice and try and hear the Holy Spirit. And if He told me I was going this way, and if He told me to turn right and go down there, I started doing what I felt He was saying. And I figured, what do I have to lose? I could be wrong. It could be me, but Let's try it. And I found that I avoided more accidents. I went faster to where I was going because there was less traffic. If I listened to the Holy Spirit, it got me there in a much better frame of mind and a much better time sequence. And I thought, and you know, when I think about that, sometimes over the years, we forget those things, don't we? We get indifferent to them. We let them lapse. And I remember when we were in Nigeria. Now in Nigeria, uh, Dri driving is, is very um, exciting. In fact, it's very sobering because in the center lane, like the center of all the freeways, there are wrecked out cars that have been burned up. They're just sitting there. The, the carcasses of the cars are just there in the middle of the, in the, in between the two roads. And it's like, Looked like Mad Max at the Thunderdome, if you've ever seen that movie where all of the, the crashed vehicles were all just sitting on the desert sand. And, and there was there was crashes everywhere, and there was just leftover stuff. And, and when they got in the car, they prayed seriously. They prayed very seriously about that trip. Even if they were going three miles, they prayed very seriously for protection about that trip. Everybody repented of their sins. Everybody was right with God when they took off for that trip because they told us if you get in an accident there, nobody comes. There's no ambulances that come to help you. 
Nobody comes to help you. And the people on the road will come and rob you while you're laying there dying, and they won't help you physically, but they'll take all your stuff, strip your car, and let you lay there with a broken leg, broken back, whatever, until maybe somebody that knows you and cares about you will come along and, and drag you into their car and take you to, to the hospital, which is not a very good deal either. And so uh, we have to realize that sometimes we need to pray more before we undertake our journeys <laughs> because uh, we are blessed that we have all the support services that we have, but it's better not to need the support services. And if the Holy Ghost can keep you out of an accident, woohoo, that's the best place to be, kept out of the accident. No one's, nobody wants to be there. And so uh, we need to ask him about other things, investments. We need to ask him about buying houses or, or cars or lands. We need to ask him for his guidance. We need to ask him to help us every day that we won't get in the flesh and, and become rude. We need to really realize that he's the Holy Spirit of God and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, which means if we're his temple, he dwells there. So he's with us all the time. And he is a person. And because he is a person, we can relate to him as a person. Jesus is a person. Father God is a person. He is a spirit, but he is a person. He has personality. He has attributes of, of personality and emotions, and he has a will. You've all heard about God's will. Well, God has a will. Human beings have wills. I mean, we're, we're made in the image of God, and it's really very precious that he would have given us those parts of himself. Isn't that true? And uh, most other animals, they don't have a will. You could say, well, I got a stubborn donkey. Well, that's a stubborn donkey. But they don't have a will to make a choice between good and evil. They're, they're of a different genus. They're a different creation. The human beings are so precious in the sight of God that they've been given the very attributes of God. Their memories, their emotions, they're very tender, they're very precious to God, and he wants to make them every bit whole. And since you are one, that's what he wants to do for you, is make you every bit whole. And he's working in that. The Bible says, I think it's Philippians, says he's working both to will and to do of his own good pleasure in you to make you perfect when Jesus returns. And so the Holy Spirit brings Jesus to us, he reveals Jesus to us, he opens the words to us, he gives us revelation of things, he opens the mind of Christ to us, he brings life to us. Even though we're looking a little spotted and wrinkled, we still are being renewed in the inner man every day. And we have to recognize that uh, we won't always be spotted and wrinkled because he's coming back for a bride without what? Spot or wrinkle. So be happy with your wrinkles. Glory to God. I'm serious. Yeah, enjoy them while you've got them because you won't always have them. Praise the Lord. That's one way to look in the mirror, right? I see you now, but you ain't always going to be there. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Well, Holy Spirit, we're just so thankful for you. You bring us, uh, you bring us life. You bring us productivity, you bring us creativity, you bring us the knowing of the which is of God and that which is not. You bring us opening the word of God to us. You bring us the uh, comfort. You bring us truth. Uh, you bring us into all truth. You bring us healing. You bring us deliverance. You bring us freedom. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. The Holy Spirit comes to lead us into what? All truth. 
And so therefore, we are going more and more into freedom every single day. Praise God. Anybody else have a comment that they want to make before we close? Okay, next week we're going to talk about being justified in the Holy Spirit. Justified. So we're going to talk about that as something that he does for us. The Holy Spirit does that for us. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. We don't have to live with what we used to be. When we find out who we are in him, then old things what? Pass away. Behold, all things are new again. Praise God. So, Lord, we thank you. Blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hi, I'm Pastor George Stover, and uh, I want to invite you to come and join with us as we build the kingdom of God at Wellspring Church of All Nations. We're located at 8140 West Lone Mountain Road. There's also an entrance off of 4870 Janelle Drive. There is nothing more important to you and I today than the Word of God. If we, if we don't learn as a people, as a nation, to return to the Bible, to return to faith in Jesus Christ and Him and Him alone, we're, we're not going to have the country that we've had, the one that I grew up in. I want my grandchildren and uh, my children, your children and your grandchildren to live in the America I grew up in. But, you know, it's going to depend on us, the people of faith. We have to get into the Word and, and just stick with it, and uh, having done all, stand. And so we're really, really uh, in wanting you to come and just be a part of who we are, what we're doing here, because it's really all about you.